Hello friends, welcome to the Picking Fruits channel and we are back in the lab. In this video I will be showing you how to make a grain to grain transfer using colonized grain in a jar and we'll be transferring it into sterile grain in a mushroom bag. Today, you are who you are today. See? You're still me, but you're a newer version. If you have access to a flow hood, that is the most ideal way to prevent any contaminations. If you do not have access to a flow hood, you can easily make a sob or a still air box at home using a plastic tub, drilling out some holes for your arms to fit into, and you would just have all of your tools and equipment inside of the vessel, and you would simply stick your arms in trying to only move and maneuver things that you're actually working on, trying not to bump any of the sides and if you have access to isopropyl alcohol, isopropyl alcohol is also a very good way to sanitize your surrounding area and your hands. Uh, just be careful, make sure you do not have open flames as it is extremely flammable. So the first thing you're going to want to do is have a fully colonized jar. And when I say fully colonized, I mean fully colonized. You want your jar to be 100% white. You want to make sure that all of your mycelium has attached itself to the grain. Here we have a jar that's about 95% and here you can see this very corner here still needs to be colonized. So I would not use this jar for transferring as anything that you transfer, imagine it just expanding and exploding out of control. So if there was some kind of bacteria just hanging out in that little corner, that bacteria will transfer and eat away at your grain, inhibiting the mycelium's growth and overtaking your grain. So do, you do not want to do that. So the second step is make sure that your vessel doesn't have any cracks, make sure it doesn't have any leaks, make sure that it's sturdy. And you're gonna wanna take it and break up the mycelium gently. You don't wanna break the jar and cut your hand. A couple shakes around the jar should do the trick. Loosening up any of the mycelial mass that's stuck to itself. It might look a little bit strenuous here, but really I'm just being extremely gentle and within seconds you can see that the mycelium has already been broken up and all the grains within the jar are loose. Sometimes if your mycelium is a little bit older and it's a little bit more uh, marshmallow together, uh, I've seen different techniques where people take foam rollers and they beat the jars on the foam rollers or deflated balls also do the trick. I've actually never really adopted any of those techniques because I found that a little elbow grease usually gets the trick done. After inoculation, it could take several weeks for a jar to be fully colonized with healthy mycelium. And once your jar is fully colonized, you wanna make sure that you use it within a week to a week and a half of it being fully colonized. If you don't, you can start running into bacterial problems or thickly and densely clumped mycelium that's going to be really hard to get out of your jar. So the next step of the process is going to be wiping down your jars with isopropyl alcohol. You want to make sure that they are as sanitized as they possibly can be so that you don't introduce any bacteria from outside of the jar into your freshly sterilized grains. After your jars have been wiped down and thoroughly sanitized, you're going to want to spray down your hands with isopropyl alcohol to make sure that you also clear away any bacteria that might be lingering on your hands. And you will also want to spray down your bags to make sure that anything that's lingering on the lip of the bag is also cleared away. So with those steps out of the way, I'm going to remove the Tyvek filter, preferably in front of a blow hood. And I'm going to open the bag to allow for the introduction of the new colonized grain. You never want to put your hands above the top of the bag so that you don't introduce anything into the bag that's unwanted. As you can see here, the tie bag method worked really well from our previous video and that allows the bag to be almost sealed on its own without the need of an impulse sealer prior to inoculation. So I will be transferring about a quarter of the jar into the bag. Also, when removing the lid off of your jar, you want to make sure that you never actually place your hands over the opening of the jar. So very quickly, I will lift the jar, holding it with my second hand, and pouring 
really generous amount. And then quickly resealing my jar. Now that I've introduced the grain into this new bag, I will refold the gussets and I will quickly seal it in front of the flow hood. Now if you don't have access to a flow hood and an impulse sealer, you can try to do this in a freshly sanitized bathroom or a very small space with no open windows and no um, airflow coming into the room. You also want to make sure that you bleach everything down, isopropyl everything down, clean all surfaces, clean your hand. You can also do this naked if you're if you're afraid of having lint or animal dander end up on your freshly sterilized grains. And if you don't have access to an impulse sealer, you can also use the accordion zip tie method where you would take the bag and you would accordion fold it, fold it over, and then put a zip tie and tie it down really tightly so that nothing can go inside of your bag after it's been transferred into. Now, the next step is going to be to give your grain a toss so that you can distribute the newly colonized grain into your sterile grain and breaking down any bigger chunks with your fingers and massaging it into the grain. And after a couple weeks, you'll see some growth and you'll be ready to take it to the next step. So I'm gonna do it a second time for the second grain bag for the second strain. Cleaning my hands one more time. I like to spray everything a second and third time just to make sure we are 100% safe. And uh, with these metal rings and metal lids, you will notice that they have a silicone seal on the bottom, which sometimes makes it extremely hard to get your fingers under. Uh, what I like to do is I like to simply wiggle it back and forth until it frees itself up. And then once it's freed up and I notice that I can lift it, I will leave the lid on the jar until I am actually ready to use it. So like I did before, taking the Tyvek sleeve out. Never placing my hands over the bag. You can even do this one-handed, which is probably the best and the preferred method. So taking your jar, quickly placing the lid back over and sealing our jar. And once again, I will fold it at the gussets in front of the flow hood, very quickly sealing it. After I've sealed it, I want to make sure that I leave it for a couple more seconds so that when I pull off, the silicone insert doesn't pull away at the plastic bag tearing my seal. So if you can see here, that's exactly what you want to see. You want to make sure that there is a seal from side to side. and a way to test your seal and make sure that your seal actually stuck is to take your fingers and let all of the weight rest on your fingers. If the bag holds, that means that there is a tight seal. You can pull at the you can pull at the sides of the bags as well and make sure that there is no tears coming apart. And this will ensure healthy mycelium for your next project. So once again, I will take the whole bag and I will toss it around trying to distribute the mycelium as best as I can. And just like that, we've completed two grain to grain transfers from a jar into a bag. So here's the end of the grain to grain tutorial. If you found this interesting, if you found it at all informative, or if you learned something today, consider subscribing to our channel and liking this video, share it with your friends, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.